And Top Story, as always, is brought to you by Vodafone Further Together and Blessed Suga. And tonight, private sector is up in arms against government over three key revenue measures, which the Finance Ministry identifies as crucial to the country's economic recovery plan with the International Monetary Fund. Parliament, by a one-sided majority last weekend, forcefully pushed through the approval of the Excise Duty Amendment Bill 2022, the Growth and Sustainability Level Bill 2022. There's also the Ghana Revenue Authority Bill of 2022 and the Income Tax Amendment Bill 2022. All revenue measures as part of the conditions for securing uh, what we're on the lookout for, a $3 billion IMF facility. Well, when asked about the likely impact of these revenue measures on the private sector, Information Minister Kajor Ponkrumah told me that these measures were crucial to Ghana's quest of securing a bailout from the International Monetary Fund. Listen. Uh, yes, we've been um, expressing the hope that by the end of the March uh, window, we would have been able to um, get board approval but not all the things that need to be met have been met yet uh, we're in the process of concluding some of them we are also hopeful that we'll get the financing assurances from the uh, external creditors uh, and these uh, two final things coming together should help us uh, close that board approval as quickly as possible and i think as a first step we should acknowledge that when it comes to taxation uh, whoever upon whom the incident of taxation falls will often raise an objection and when that objection is raised, you have to listen. And if there are amendments that can make the burden lighter, then we examine how to, first of all, prefer and accept those amendments. And for some of our other colleagues in the business community, that at the end of the day, what we need to do is to find that sensible middle ground. In fulfillment of the policy which we approved in November last year, and in fulfillment of the prior actions which we agreed with the fund, um, to execute. This is necessary so that we can also close this chapter and then get the external um, creditors to give the necessary financing assurances between um, China on one side, the Paris Club on another side, and then we can get the board approval. As you rightly mentioned at the top of this interview, March was when we were hoping to finish. Uh, we have not finished all the things that we have to do as a republic, including the passage of these measures, uh, but it is not too late. We have room to do the outstanding things so that we get this chapter behind us. Mm. Uh, and finally, the question confronting government is about the new uh, deadline or perhaps the new timelines that you're working with. Uh, when are we hoping to secure this deal finally? We give ourselves, first of all, the end of last year to finish the staff level agreement. And I think we did pretty well on that. And then we gave quarter one to um, conclude the prior actions that would have been agreed upon in the SLA um, so that we could get board approval. Those prior actions include these three bills. We need to focus on these three bills, do whatever amendments need to be done, get them passed so that we can get external financing assurances and therefore get the board approval. Um, mentioning new timelines at this point in time may not necessarily be uh, what we want to do now. What we want to do now is to get these three revenue measures done, get the external and financing assurances done, and then go to board. Well, so could you open up there confirming that there's no new timeline and government remains as certain, but what's crucial is these three key revenue measures uh, which government is relying on as part of the plan to meet the conditions of the International Monetary Fund bailout. But tonight, Joy News is learning that Ghana's journey to securing that crucial IMF bailout may be far longer than anticipated as the French government is revealing that China continues to be reluctant uh, as to subscribing to the external debt restructuring program. Uh, just uh, last night, the foreign minister for France has been holding bilateral engagements with President uh, Kufando on the matter. Afterwards, she's been addressing the press on why Ghana has not secured an IMF deal. And uh, the question of debt uh, it's, uh, it is treated by Club of Paris, but not only, also from a common framework. So the 22 members of, uh, of the Paris Club, we, they discuss 
how we can uh, help, how we can support you know, the uh, government of your country. And um, in this case, uh, 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 of course, uh, the economic situation of Ghana uh, worries all of, of us, and uh, the equation of debt uh, is uh, it is treated by Club of Paris, but not only, also from the economic framework. So the 22 members of, uh, of the Paris Club, we, they discuss how we can help, how we can support you know, the uh, government of your country. And um, in this case, uh, uh, of course, uh, we have to make the rest restructuration of, of uh, the external debt. And uh, I think the discussion with the China and the role of China, it will be very, very important. So that's why I spoke to you about the importance of the common framework. So it's now confirmed that we're nowhere close, but government is relying on these three key revenue measures. But there's a clear message on that from the business community, that the IMF austerity, even before approval, is beginning to bite out. I want to bring in my colleague uh, James uh, Avegi, who monitored a press conference addressed uh, jointly by the AGI, Guta, and the Chamber of Commerce. James, uh, tell us more and why... Uh, is the business community worried about these three revenue measures that are crucial to securing the IMF deal? Uh, blessed, they are worried because they feel that they have already paid their dues to government. They indicated that in the past couple of years, government has met its revenue target uh, in each of the years. And so that was made possible by the taxes that the business community has paid to government. The other bit of it which bites or goes into the worry about the IMF is that the COVID-19 has already eroded their investment capitals right. due to uh, also partly because of the depreciation of the Ghana citizen. So uh, that is affecting them. They are cost of operation is already uh, 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 so high that it is making their businesses uncompetitive on the sub-region because if the cost of production goes high, mm -hmm. they uh, put that into their pricing. And so if you look at their uh, competitiveness compared to other countries in the sub-region, uh, uh, they are already afraid that it may eat into uh, what the, the, the whole after negotiation. And so that's why they think that uh, government need to do something about this and the fear of the IMF uh, deal. The government should not sacrifice the survival and development of the private sector for the sake of the IMF program. The efforts of the IMF to support our national economy will amount to nothing if it ends up destroying local businesses. As is always said, the private sector is the engine of growth of every economy. Therefore, its importance cannot be overemphasized. So the government should create an enabling environment that will ensure the growth and sustainability of the private sector rather than overtaxing businesses out of their effectiveness. Well, so that's the president of the Ghana Union of Traders, uh, Dr. Joseph Obeng, but his this time round, uh, speaking as a convener for the uh, Umbrella Coalition, that's the Ghana Joint Business Consultative Forum. Well, Mac Beidou Abwaji is the CEO of the Chamber of uh, Commerce. He's also a member of that group, uh, speaking on behalf of the uh, private community. Thank you, sir, for your time here on top story. Francis Boy is also a tax consultant. He'll be helping us out with the uh, alternatives for government. But let's start off with you, Mark uh, Abwaji. Uh, government says that without these revenue measures, we, we can't make progress in terms of our uh, IMF bailout plan. Uh, as business community, are you mindful that without this, the entire 
economy may collapse and you may have nothing on your hands. Yes, we are, we are very mindful uh, of that. Please let me say good evening to your listeners. And I think that the IMF did not say that without this bad candles, we can't know the three billion. What they are saying is that we should enhance our revenue generating. And for enhancing it, there are several forms of that. And it's not necessary introducing new taxes or increasing uh, the rate of existing taxes. We have said that if the government can improve on the efficiency of collection and ensure compliance, we are likely to get more than the $4 billion that we are looking for, rather than introducing new taxes. In Ghana, the research has shown that those who are supposed to pay tax are about 13 million people. Less than 5 million are paying. If you will be all those who are supposed to pay, and everyone will be paying a bit and pieces of it, we'll get the money that the government uh, uh, is looking for. Instead of piling um, taxes every day out on the few businesses and individuals that they can identify, they keep on piling their taxes ensuring that they get a revenue. It's a lazy way of, for me, getting the revenue. One thing that the IMF also said, it's a two-legged affair. You are neither looking at your expenditure and also your revenue. You don't have to overburden the private sector to get your revenue. And nothing has to tighten our belt. Why yourself, you are not tightening the belt of also reducing uh, your, your, your expenditure. I don't think the IMF will be happy. In the end, they give us the, the three billion and they come and realize that all the business that we have in Ghana have collapsed. Go and check our GDP and look at the contribution of the private sector to our GDP and look at the contribution of government. Go and check the revenue that you make, the taxes, and look at how much the, the, the private sector have been paying. In but, fact, but Mark, but Mark you, you agree the that the... Years, Yes, but Mark, you agree, you agree that the amount that we're looking at here is, is uh, a very substantial amount. Some 4 billion Ghana cities uh, annually out of these three measures. Do, do you have an alternative, by the way, that, that could even generate much more? Yes, the alternative is, is one, thing, one, one thing that I've said. It's also the tax. The other one is the tax exemption. Huge amount of money could be written from blocking these uh, loopholes and also abolishing these tax uh, exemptions. Go and check those who are benefit from or benefiting from tax exemptions and look at the number of Guardian business that are benefiting. They are just using it to just to, uh, uh, for their political uh, people to benefit from that. If you are able to abolish the tax exemption, a lot of revenue will come out from there. If you increase our compliance, we will get re revenue from there. And mind you, if you help the businesses to grow, if you don't overburden them at the production level and they grow and they sell and they make a lot of revenue, you will get a lot of money from corporate tax. These taxes that are coming, it doesn't end there. After paying all these things and the other cost of being business, you also have to go and pay your corporate tax. So build the private sector, empower them. In other jurisdictions, they are using both fiscal policies and monetary policies to incentivize the private sector. So they are getting the taxes at the end of it, at the level of the corporate tax. They don't kill businesses. You are killing businesses and you are increasing taxes. If I'm able to meet the profit, what are you going to tax? Uh, and now because we know and uh, now we know that you're making a fresh demand for fresh dialogue. The uh, information minister pointing to the business community there that we are in the middle of a crisis and that could we need to find a middle ground. Are, are you willing for some trade-offs? At least you make you may make some losses, but in the end, it's about the economic recovery plan. Are, are you willing to support that? Yes, it's a win-win situation. He said you are looking for a middle ground. If you are looking for a middle, the right thing that you should have done is to consult those who are going to pay taxes. <laughs> if you don't consult them and you impose the taxes on them, you don't know. You may not know the effect of these taxes on businesses. Consult. Let us build a consensus and agree that these taxes that we need them, and then we will also in turn we will put in our recommendations and say at what level can we put the taxes that mm. government will get the revenue. I see. And the businesses also have some level of relief to also operate. People have invested huge sums of money, mm. dollars and cities into their businesses, thinking that they will get profit and create value for their shareholders. And you are using taxes to kill the businesses. You want to build a middle ground without consulting the business. I don't. I think that it's a. It's okay. A, it's 
you search for the business. Uh, all right, Mark. If you want to build a middle ground, consult those people. Let them also have the make input into whatever you want to do. Okay. Uh, uh, Mark, Mark there's a, there's a, yeah, Mark, there's a bigger conversation we'll be looking at, uh, the possibility of layoffs. Uh, we'll hear from uh, the Federation of Labor. But Francis Boy is a tax consultant. He's also with us uh, in this whole conversation. Uh, Mr. Boy, first of all, do you see these three key revenue measures working out for government? Four billion is the target annually. Uh, could we be meeting the targets easily uh, as, of course, government is envisaging? Um, it's doubtful because if you look at the timing of the start of the, the 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 measures, I think we are already late by one quarter. So it's unlikely that we may get that amount of money. And looking at your position that the players in the sector are also expressing, um, it creates room for people to develop ways to go around this tax measures that have been introduced, such as tax avoidance. But I think that if you look at the entire tax level agreement that was reached with the IMF, uh, the obligation on Ghana is to undertake structural reforms that will ensure public debt sustainability, which we, we have completed with the domestic debt exchange. Then also undertake medium-term plans to generate additional revenue and reforms that will boost our tax compliance. Here is what I think that if the government had engaged their players, we could have done a combination of both. I mean, raising additional revenue can come from either um, aggressive tax enforcement of the existing taxes and then possibly agreeing with the business community to introduce some level of new taxes, probably not at this high level that we are seeing. I believe that if the engagement had been done, possibly the rate that we are seeing could have been some middle ground, then everybody will buy into into this uh, new tax reform. That and and and, pra and practically speaking, what are the alternatives? Go government is finding itself between a, a rock and a hard place. I think if government is unable to get this new revenue um, lines introduced and get it fully complied, I think there's more of additional resources that need to be injected into tax administration to enforce the existing one. For that one, nobody can, you know, raise any issues ab about them because they are already existing. I mean, it's clear that around the, the, the sub-region, our total tax contribution to GDP is quite low, which means that there are so many other areas we are not collecting the taxes. So I think that enforcement is, is the way to go if government is having some opposition on the new taxes that have been introduced. And tonight, there's a lot unfolding uh, with regard to this conversation about the three key revenue measures and its implication for the business community. There's the aspect of labor and the potential layoff that's imminent within industries. Um, James, you've been listening to that argument from the Ghana Federation of Labor. W what are they telling us? Exactly. Blessed. So the Federation thinks that as the cost of production is uh, going high and government will be taxing the uh, uh, profit of these industries operating in Ghana, uh, they may not have enough money to hire hands in their industries. And so it may result in mass layout layoffs in the country. Abraham Kumsin is the uh, president of the Federation. We can listen to him. If <laughs> the industry collapses. Where will be your members? There won't be any trade union. You see, that's why we are here because you could see that this forum predominantly is is for the business owners. And why should a trade union be part? But we sense danger that once their businesses collapse, once they relocate to to go or I'm close or wherever. We can follow them there. Uh, and I'm grateful, James of AG, my colleague, monitoring all of this uh, development at the news conference that was addressed by the Ghana Joint Business Consultative uh, for Mark Boidou Abouachi. He's the uh, CEO for the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, he's joined us with his perspective. Uh, then we heard from Francis indicating that government may not meet that target of the $4 billion, uh, per annum. Gentlemen, stay with us because Abraham Kumsen is also joining the conversation. Uh, Mr. Kumsen, do, do you, wh what numbers do you anticipate, first of all, in terms of this uh, potential 
layoffs? Oh, uncountable. Already we've lost, we've lost a lot of them. And uh, you can check from the labor department, all the statistical service, they have the figures. They can give you accurate figures of, you know, job losses. And see, all what we can say now is that we don't know why. Because the people from the academia, we have <coughs> economy, we have uh, uh, even the MPs, in government MPs, that is the MPP MPs, have raised concerns about the performance of the finance minister. We shouldn't be I mean, wasting our time the time that the person well, why why is the president not reshuffling? Why? The finance minister people have raised issues about the competence of the man. It's a fact. I'm not saying it. At a point we have about ninety be. plus MPs MPP MPs raising concerns, raising issues about the man's capabilities. That president change this man. He cannot lead us into IMF because the figure that he's bringing, you know, and his projections are not accurate. That's a problem. And if they are maintaining but, 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 but Mr. Kumsen, we need to save, quote, a dying uh, economy at this point. So you, you agree we that we're, 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 when we we're not in normal times. We need to find a solution. Man, yes. If, if the, that player is still in the, in, the, in the team, why do we change? I mean, play. Even football matches. The coach monitors the performance of each and every player. If he sees that, no, this guy's performance is not good, don't change. Why? We shouldn't bother ourselves with all these, you know, issues that we are talking about. The finance minister must be changed. That's all. Okay, and that, that's, change, that's, that's, that's your, your problem. Right, that, that, that's your opinion that on the matter. The, the president... Uh, of course, has the ultimate power to do that dismissal. But from I the perspective is, is of the, yeah, yeah, I, I get your, I get your point. But but let's let's remain, let's remain focused on. Yes, they're I get your point. Because the taxes that are being paid by the business people in this case, too many of them. Okay. Seventeen taxes. But Mr. Kumsen, let, let's solve the problem about the potential job losses. In, in the estimation of the Ghana Federation of Labour, what what recommendations are you making at this point? in terms of averting this disaster sure that you are talking of? AGI, AGI, we, we are working. The AGI, the open of the practice of businesses, they came out with proposals. This presented this thing to Parliament. We want it, as I read it out for you to, to hear, they came out with a lot of proposals for them to consider. They didn't have it. They never engaged them. That's why today they met and they are, they are sending another petition to the president himself. They came out with a whole of things, alternatives. What can be done to, you know, arrive at whatever figures that they want. But he, if, look, if a liar, me, that's what I, how, how I speak. If you may like it or not, I don't care. But the people who are managing the economy are not being truthful to act. They are telling me what this money, they want that. Look, I didn't know the same people who said that the e levy can solve every problem. They went to Parliament. That the e levy, when the e levy is given to them, they will do it and uh, use it for so many things. We're not going to go to IMF and all that. They wanted another what property tax. It was also approved for them for this finance minister. So what is this? We are just playing games with it. We are wasting our time. We are always finding that this is the finance minister is not competent. I'm telling you this. Look, we can give you billions of cities. Billions and billions of uh, what dollars of pound sterling, he will mess it up. Look at what happened in, 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 in Britain. Coco Quatin, just a little mistake that he made. Could he survive? Okay. Could he stay in, in his position? Well, I, he I, was his job. And even his prime minister, that lady, also, also, also was sad. Now we are here, the first minister who is messing everybody up. How come that the MPs, the uh, uh, MPP MPs, said, they were not going to even discuss, participate in the discussion of the uh, budget statement that this man brought to Parliament. Why? What did they see? What has happened now? Okay. They going around, 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 around. They yeah, indeed. Because of Bonkuma, you say that uh, four billion. If you give them hundred billion dollars, they will chop. They will mess it up. I'm telling you this. Okay. Yeah, they should remove the finance minister. I, I get the, the point. The, 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 the so, so the position of the people there who can right. take up that 
Mm, and I get the point there. The position of the Federation of Labour is that uh, we, of course, uh, deal with the aspect of the political class, especially the finance minister. We need to wrap up, gentlemen. Uh, let me start off with you, uh, Mr. Boy. Uh, the way forward about averting this potential job losses. Uh, and then I'll come to you, Mark, to talk about what practically you'll be doing as industries. So let's start off with you, Mr. Boy, on that. So, so I think the obligation in terms of the tax revenue is a medium term, if you look at the sub-level agreement. So I think that government can go back to the IMF and say that, look, we can't raise all this revenue within this term, so probably relax the conditionalities a little bit. And then government will engage the business community. If the rates are high, we can meet at some middle ground. But again, if we cannot raise all the revenue, possibly we can look at the expenditure side. Savings that expenditure is also equal to, you know, uh, balancing the equation. And I believe that if this is done, we can get somewhere. But certainly um, for enforcement of the existing taxes, it's a must. And we need to invest a lot in the tax administration for the GRA to be able to collect the existing taxes. That way we will not get uh, opposition from any, any, anyone. Okay, grateful uh, for your time. And for you, Mark, you belong to that society, the Ghana Chamber of Commerce. How do you intend to deal and avert this imminent uh, massive layoff that w we're about to see in the sector? Well, we, we, we don't have any option. Uh, when businesses are going through difficulties, the first thing that they do is to cut costs. And the cost cutting really affects uh, those who are working, people who are being laid off. Uh, for us, we are not happy laying people off, but when the circumstances for us to do it, for the survival of businesses, people will do it. That is why we don't want to get to this level. We are hoping that after sending the petition, the president will open the doors to us, for us to engage, so that we can also make clear to him the difficulties that we are going through. We don't have to get to a level where a lot of people will be. Already the unemployment rate in Ghana is high. People are completing universities. People are coming out day in, day out. They don't have a job. We don't have to compound that situation. So don't force businesses to do that. We all want right. a win-win situation. Mm. We want okay. Ghana to move forward. Help all of us. All right, Mark. You don't impose the tax without consulting the people. Okay. It won't work. Uh, and, uh, of course, this conversation will continue. I'm grateful to Mark uh, Bedou Abouachi, CEO of the Ghana Chamber of Commerce, uh, also to Francis Boy, a tax consultant, and, uh, of course, Abraham Kumsin of the Ghana Federation of Labour. And bless us again. Next is Newsline.